I'd like to first ask you about the peace process. Uh, this has been described as the worst humanitarian crisis yeah. in the world. How close are you to seriously getting into the peace process? Well, well thank you for having me. It's, it's a really good question. It's, it's, uh, according to the UN, Yemen is uh, the greatest crisis in the world. 30 million, 24 out of them need some kind of form of humanitarian assistance. We as a government of Yemen, we want peace yesterday, not even today. But we want a sustainable peace, a peace that will not explode in our faces in a few years to come. That's why we're so keen with the UN, with our old international community. We're lucky to have the Security Council united in Yemen, and we want peace. And we just need and wait for the Houthis to decide to move ahead in the right direction. So we're just there waiting until the Houthis decide to move. So are you in talks then with the Houthis? Well, we were. In 2016, we spent 100 days debating a solution that everybody agrees on. And at the end, unfortunately, the Houthis decided not to participate, not to sign it, just because they thought that what's ahead is better for them. And, and it's, re it's really unfortunate because Yemen was one of the best examples of the Arab Spring back in 2011. We were so close of getting it together. But unfortunately, lust and greed for power by the part of the Houthis, which is supported by Iran, made it impossible. Iranian weapons were recently discovered by the U.S. Navy headed into Yemen. Do you think uh, that was just one in a larger number of weapons that are coming from Iran? Yeah, we heard it. It's not a surprise to us. We know that Iran has been beefing up the Houthis ever since 2012. I mean, ever since the talk about the nuclear deal, Iran has been really pumping the Houthis with weapons, expertise, with, 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 with oil shipments and, and contrary to international uh, law and, and contrary to international resolutions. And that's not a surprise. We have a UNVEM, which is a unique mechanism by the UN to prevent that. But unfortunately, it has its you know, weaknesses because this is small dose that goes to the Houthis with cornets like weapons and all made in Iran. And Iran is still until today disputing that and, I mean, denying that, which is really absurd. We had uh, the U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo in Saudi Arabia talking with Faisal al-Assad about de-escalating the violence. Is the U.S. playing a, a part, playing a role in the peace process? I mean, let me be frank with you. Ever since the maximum pressure of the uh, Trump administration being going on against Iran, we've seen good results. We know that the Houthis are the puppets of Iran, obviously. And obviously, and, 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 and to be honest with you, if we had this maximum pressure back in 2016, I think we would have signed a deal back in Kuwait. But unfortunately, we don't have it that. The Houthis need to know that they cannot rely on Iran. They have to just go back and talk peace with us. And the only way to do that is to de-escalate and to talk peace according to the international uh, law and international resolutions, including 2216. It does seem like you have the most powerful people in the world pushing for peace, the U.S., Saudi Arabia, your government together, why aren't you able to defeat the Houthi rebels? Yeah, it, it is really unfortunate. You know, the Houthis are Yemenis. The problem in Yemen is a Yemeni-Yemeni problem. It's not a, a, a rivalry or uh, b between the regional powers that started the war in Yemen. It was Yemenis. It was just complete loss of power by the Houthis. The Houthis were part of the deal. They were part of the national dialogue. They decided Otherwise, we went ahead away from the transitional period that was going on until 2014. We just want to diffuse and crack their false illusions of power. They think that if they just continue to hijack Yemen, hijack the airport in Sana'a because they don't want to open it for, in for internal flights, hijacking all the peace processes, that the, tire, the, the world would get tired of them and they just recognize them. I think that's, that's an illusion that needs to be cracked. And, and I like the messages from the United States. They're strong against Iran, they're strong against the Houthis. And I think we would have a shot in peace if we consist and if we persist on this pressure. So here at the Munich Security Conference, Secretary Mike Pompeo is here, uh, Defense Secretary Esper is here, Energy Secretary Briette is here, um, Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, is here. Are you able to speak with the Americans about doing yes. something at this conference? Yes, yes, we were in contact, we have meetings, and, and I think our message is consistent from our ambassadors, from their meetings with us in Riyadh and also in Aden. We're just saying that you keep your maximum pressure on Iran, you keep this pressure and on the Houthis to let them know that whatever they do, they have to talk peace, they have to relinquish their ties with Iran, and they have just to, like all Yemenis, whatever radical ideas they have, divine right, whatever you want to you call it, just put it in a political party. 
and join the, the parliament and, and have your aspirations go through this way. You can't just take the gun, stick it in our faces and expect us to say nothing. And I think the message is, is clear now. Today, uh, or yesterday probably, they have a conference in Brussels because they want to deal with the Houthis' intransigence and obstructing a humanitarian, which is gone wild. The world cannot just stay silent about the Houthis. And I must say, it's really unfortunate sometimes the Security Council and others would just blame everyone, every part. I wish they just point fingers at those obstructing peace because without pointing fingers, I don't think we would get there. So your message then to the U.S. is keep the pressure on Iran in order to make peace in Yemen. Keep the pressure on Iran and you will see peace in Yemen.